Okay guys, so this is day two of unit six. Um, we are flipping the classroom, of course, so make sure that you are watching these videos before I see you next class. All right, so this will go on page nine, and this is the worksheet as far as right triangles. And it had a question, or we're looking at a question that's exploring, where we're explaining why the triangle JKL shown is an incorrect um, it, it, it is incorrect to write the equation as cosine of 64 is equal to 5 over 14. Now in class, we said to put our body where this angle is. So if I'm here and I'm talking about cosine, per Sokotoa, I'm going to be looking at this adjacent over hypotenuse piece. Okay? So if I'm thinking adjacent from the angle, um, we could say that it's 5 because we don't see a right triangle here. Um, but we could also say that the adjacent could be 14. Okay, so we don't know which one's the hypotenuse, nor do we know which one's the adjacent. Okay, just because it's 64, we cannot assume that, ah, that looks like a right triangle, maybe that's the right angle. And say, okay, this would be the hypotenuse. Okay, if that was the case, then it would be adjacent over hypotenuse would be 5 over 14, then you would have, of course, this 5 over 14, which is the adjacent A. Um, opposite from the 64 would be the opposite O. And then the biggest angle, um, or the biggest side, which is opposite from that 90 degree angle, would be the hypotenuse H. Okay, But we can't do that. It is incorrect to assume that all because it never gave us that it was a right triangle. So if it was not a right triangle, how can we find the area of this triangle? Okay. So let's say that this is not a right triangle. We're not assuming that where it's green, is it is a 90 degree angle. What we could do is we could slice straight down and we could create two right triangles. One and then one that's bigger. So we're focusing on the one here that was given. So we kind of split it up so that we still have a 64 as an angle. We still have 5. But now we've created this 90 degree angle here, symbolizing that opposite from that, this would be the hypotenuse. Okay. So if I'm looking at 64 and I wanted to find this, the area formula for a triangle is 1 half times base times height. Okay, so if I'm looking at applying that with this triangle, the big base would be this one, and the height, which we're finding right now, would be this. Okay, so our goal is to find this height so that we can use the entire base together. Okay, so that height is that or that, depending on how you're looking at it, but ultimately you know that this, these triangles would be touching, just like they are over here in the original picture. Okay, so our goal is to find the height. So I'm concentrating on 64 degrees. This is 5 in here. I could say if my unknown is way over here opposite from 64, I could put it as x. We're just going to do what we did in class. Put your body where the angle is. From there, we know O is opposite and H is hypotenuse. Sokotoa-wise, we know that that's going to be sine. So sine of 64 degrees is equal to x over 5. Okay, that'll help me find this x value, which I know it to be my height of the triangle. So all I need to do is put into my calculator sine of 64 degrees, and we're going to multiply each side by 5. So 5 times the sine of 64 degrees is equal to x. All right, so let's go to the calculator. 5 times the sine of 64 now, just like in class I mentioned, this is in default radian mode, okay? So we need to make sure that we're putting in degree symbols when we're putting this into our calculator. Otherwise, we're going to have to change it to degree mode. So we could just bypass that by pressing that pi button, finding our degree symbol, oops, and just pressing enter, and then control enter and see what we get. Get in good habit of going back up to make sure you get at least three decimal places, and it'll be 0.494. So 4.494 is the height right here 
of this triangle. So we'll just say the area is one half times the big base of 14 times the height of what we got here for the number. And something I want to say right now is, as we are doing a problem, it's best to either just copy what you see, the entire thing, in your um, calculator so that you're more exact, or if you choose to just write decimal answers, you need to do at least six throughout the problem, okay? So throughout the problem, I would rather you do the entire, just copy the answer, but those of you who want to um, just write down six, you can do either one, okay? So again, one half times the base times the height, and that base was shown to be, whoops, was shown to be as, um, let me go back, was shown to be as 14, and then the height is what we saw from before. You can write um, this to six decimal places, 493470, or you could just copy the whole thing and put it right here. Either way is fine by me. This will give you the area. Okay? So let's go ahead and pretend that we copy the whole thing. And we're just going to do 0.5 times uh, base times the height. And you get an answer reduced or uh, written out to three decimal places of 31.458. And we're going to put, there was no feet, inches, or anything here, so we're just going to put units squared because this is talking about the area. All right. So like I said, the answer would be 31.458 units squared. Now, we did a lot of work. We had to do a lot of work here. We had to think kind of, quote unquote, inside the box or inside the triangle to create these two triangles to get a height, so on and so forth. But there is an equation that you can use with triangles that look non-right, which are scaling triangles. Okay, uh, Scaling triangles, there, there is an equation that you can use to quickly get to this answer as far as the area is concerned. Okay? It has certain stipulations, but we are able to do that, in fact. Okay? So just real quick, if we wanted to find the area of this triangle, remember, the base is always going to be like that horizontal interpretation. So you put 20 there, and then the height would be whatever is perpendicular to the base. It has to be meeting it at a 90 degree angle. Okay? It can't be a slant height. It has to be straight up and down, otherwise perpendicular from whatever that length that you're denoting as being the base. So this would be 1 half times 20 times 8 and you would get 80 um, square meters in this sense. Okay, so that just recap, that's what we know as far as areas are concerned. Now, that formula that I was talking about is, t is using scaling triangles and scaling is a triangle that is non-right, okay, so it's not going to have a 90 degree angle and a reminder, scaling, all the sides are different, okay? Um, the point is it does not have, so none of them equal 90 degree. That's the big stipulation, okay? So you could have like an isosceles where these are the same, but none of these angles are 90 and still be able to get away with using this equation. Um, so with that, just look for the 90. If there's not a 90 degree, it is a scaling triangle that you can use this equation with. Okay, and the equation is one half times a times b times the sine of c. Okay, here there are three different types of equations, and it all depends upon what you are looking at as far as from what angle are you starting from. Okay, are you starting from c, are you starting from b, or are you starting from a? In other words, where are you putting your body at? I like to teach my students to change this to represent one half side one, side two, and the sine of theta, the angle, okay? So really all you're doing is you're gonna be looking at two sides, side one and side two, and it's gonna be focused on from a certain degree, okay? This is otherwise referred to as side angle side. Let's look at this example here, for instance. To find the area of this, 
we could do what we did at the very beginning of this video, or we could just say one half, and 21 can be side one, or 30 can be side one. It doesn't matter. So let's say 21 is side one and, 20, and 30 is side two. It doesn't matter the order that you're doing because it's multiplication in the equation. And multiplication does not have order. Order doesn't matter. So let's put 1 half times 21 times 30. And we're going to multiply it with the sine, not the cosine, but the sine of 123 degrees. So if I wanted to find the area, which is all this space here of this triangle that is a non-right triangle, I could use this equation, put it in my calculator, and be done. So let's go ahead and do that. So control clear, we'll say 1 half times 21 times 30 times the sine of 123 degrees. 123, don't forget your degree symbol because we are still in radian mode. Um, and then press control enter. Let's look at some decimals. And I would say 264.181. So 264.181 um, units squared would be the area of this one. Remember the default is rounding to those three decimal places. Let's go back to our original equation that we had. Okay, You can use that equation that we just learned because of the fact that we have side side and an in-between angle, otherwise known as side angle side. Okay, Side angle side in that order we can use this equation that we just learned and I'll write it right here do one half times side one so pick which one five or fourteen it doesn't matter times the other side that is adjacent um, and then multiplied with sine of the angle sixty four degrees we should be able to put this into our calculator and it should be able to give us this answer that we found the long way so let's go ahead and do that real quick one half times five times whoops one half times five times what was it fourteen times the sine of sixty four degrees remember that that angle has to be in between the two adjacent sides that you're dealing with okay and sure enough you see we get thirty one point five if we go up to three decimal places it's exactly what we got the long way Okay, so think of this as the shortcut, if you will. This big misconceptions and mistakes people make is they put a cosine there instead of sine, and they forget the degree symbol here. Okay, so let's say that I were to draw a triangle. Let's say I had a triangle that looked like this. Um, let's actually use this triangle here. I could not, if I wanted to find the angle from B, in other words, sine of B, or sine of the angle. I can't say 1 half times 14 times 9. Okay, and the reason why is because these two sides have to be my adjacent sides that are touching this angle, that side angle side representation. And if you're looking at this diagram, you see that 9 is way over here that is opposite. Okay, so with that equation that we just learned, that's if and only if these two sides are both an adjacent kind of interpretation, a non-opposite form. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could do this, but I would have to change this to 6. Okay, now we're going to use this to use another equation that we're going to learn. It's called the Heron's formula. So let's see how we use this formula to find a different way of solving the area of this scaling triangle. Okay, so like I said, guys, you can use that one-half side one, side two, and sine of theta. Okay, multiplication does exist here, here, and here to find the area of a scalene triangle. That's a non-right triangle. Okay, you just have to create that side-angle-side relationship. And if you see that, you notice you'll never use the six if you're coming from the sine of C. Okay? Now, if this is confusing, you could always use Heron's formula. Heron's formula is another way to find your answer. Okay, so I'm going to do it both ways. Okay. Um, uh, actually.
actually, let me let me backtrack just a little bit. This is useful, like I said, if you have side, angle side, which looks like this side, angle side. But the thing is, I don't have a side in this one. So you're going to be able to use law of cosines, which I'm going to show you here in just a bit, or you can use Heron's formula, okay? And I want you to learn Heron's formula because it could be a simpler alternative to the law of cosines. And you're going to see as we get more involved, the more tools that you have, the easier that it's going to be to solve for whatever it is that you're looking for. All right, so we're looking for the area of this triangle. Once again, we have all three sides, okay? And in the equation, they are here. Um, a, B, and C are the three sides that we have. Little a right there. We have little b, which is across from the big B. And then we have little c, which is across from the big C. So capital letters are usually the angles, and lowercase letters are the sides that are opposite, like big C over to little c. They're those sides that are opposite from those angles. Now this S is not a side. This S right here, okay, maybe should have used a different color, not green, because I've already used green. Let's use purple. That comes from this equation right here. It's called the semi-perimeter. And the semi-perimeter is solved when I add all the sides together. 9 plus 6 plus 14 and I divide by 2. Okay, So 15, we have 29 over 2 is going to be our semi-perimeter. So all I have to do is put that for S. So that's going to be my purple, if you will. Then I'm going to put into Heron's formula, and then I'll be able to get the answer as far as what is the area. So it'll be 29 over 2, and then 29 over 2 minus something, 29 over 2 minus something, whoops, and then, let me, er let me erase just a little bit. It'll finally be this third side of 29 over 2 minus something else. Okay, this is, and I've got to take the square root at the very end. This is the equation right here for the Heron's formula. So now you're just going to put the side. So A was 14. If you look at this diagram, opposite from A is 14. Opposite from B is 9, and opposite from C is 6. So all you need to do is put that into your calculator, round to three decimal places, and that'll be your answer. Okay, so let's finish this out. Let's put this in the calculator, and let's see what it gives us to three decimal places. Okay, control clear for that. And then we have 29 over 2. So the square root, control divide, of 29 over 2 times, this is important, we need parentheses because it's going to talk about this entire um, piece right here. Okay, so you need parentheses, otherwise it's not going to multiply out correctly. Alright, uh, very important on all these parenthetic pieces. Alright, so let's just keep going. Control divide, 29 over 2. Oops. So 29 over 2 minus, okay, so let's go ahead and do it, 14, 9, and 6. 14 times parentheses, that's very important. You can't just use parentheses, parentheses, because this calculator is so high-tech that it won't interpret um, automatic multiplication, okay? So it will not interpret automatic multiplication here unless I explicitly put parentheses. Alright, so again, 14, 9, and 6. So control divide, 29 over 2. Alright, minus 9, close times parentheses, control divide, 29 over 2, and it will be subtracting 4, 9, 6. Alright, so then we control enter so that we can get a nice pretty decimal place that we'll go back up and see 0 0.410. So 18.410, uh, there were no units like feet, inches.
inches and so on and so forth. So we'll put units squared and there is your answer.